Hi guys, it's been a few days since I put the camera on. Mm, well, I saw the live. I tried the last couple of nights, but it didn't go as I wanted, so. And usually, if I'm not happy with it, I just delete it and start again, which is uh, exactly what I've done. Anyway, just a quick brief of what I've done. Uh, the um, Red Reflex mountain bike has now gone to my friend. Um, she's happy with it. I've just got to find her a better seat. Now, I don't have a black mountain bike seat, but I do have, somewhere, a white one. <laughs> um, I can't remember where it is. I don't know. I can't remember if it's down in the shed or if I bought it up here. So, once I've found it, next time I go over there, I'll take it with me and I can swap it over and See if that's any better for her. Um, the, um, the black suspension bike also sold yesterday. Yeah, I took the red mountain bike over today. I sold the black one yesterday, which was the 16th. I had to stop thinking what today's date was. I should remember that tomorrow's the 18th because I've got my um, doctor's appointment tomorrow. Um, yes, I've got to mark down the red bike as sold as well, which I'll do in a later. I'll do in a later. Do in a later. That's some new grammar right there. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, so. Apart from doing a bit more modifications to this racer, I haven't really done a lot. Um, still got the Duracell lights on this. I was going to take them off, but I decided to keep them in there. Um, but I've added this Pifco set under rear LED, and it's mounted upside down for a reason because it won't go on the other way up. Not unless I raise the saddle, and I can't raise the saddle, because then I won't get on it. So, yeah. <laughs> I was actually going to fit this Halford set on, because that throws out quite a nice beam of light, which would be great for riding in unlit areas. But, um, this is the rear light that it goes with. It's the wrong colour, but it's the same light that would go with it. I'm guessing Halford's either sold this as a separate light, which, uh, I know they sometimes do. Some manufacturers will sell their lights separate as well as a set, which I suppose is done in case you just want to replace one if one gets broken. Uh, you know, because otherwise this would be a silver instead of this sort of transparent red, ready orange colour. Probably an orange colour, I would say, because the lens is transparent red. It's sort of an opaque, I don't know. It's a weird colour, <laughs> but I wouldn't go under the seat, so that was a shame. But uh, it was a lot easier than trying to find a bracket for the cat eye front light as well that I wanted to put on originally. But uh, I was digging through my box and found the pith coat, so I thought, why not? Uh, oh, the other thing I did put on this, as well as change the back wheel to one that's in far better condition. It looks nice and shiny, but um, it is pitted. You can see all the pits when you get up close, but there's a lot less rust on it than the original one, and it's not covered in horrible paint. So I changed that, and I put this little box on here as well. Got this off an old racer that I got ages ago, and I just kept it because I thought that would be useful. So I've stuck that on there. I did manage to get some of the silver overspray off. There's a bit there I haven't got off, but just used a bit of steel wool and uh, just lightly rubbed over it. That's all I did. Um, so I'm guess I took an educated guess that whoever painted it didn't use any primer and probably only used the one coat, so I figured it would be quite thin, so 
So I gave the steel wall a go and it worked. Um, actually, on the subject of lights, do I do that now? Yeah, I'll do that now. Get it over and done with out of the way. Know what I'm thinking of it. Last night I was actually um, playing around with some cheaper lights. Um, not down here. Because I was bored, basically. No one was online, so I came through here and basically bored in here. Crap. What am I looking for? Oh, yeah. So I opened up that brand new pair of these I had. Um, and uh, put all the brackets together and whatnot. I do want to actually fit them to a bike, but I don't know what bike to fit them to. Anyway, these might still be able to find them on eBay. They were there last time I looked, although that was a while ago. I've also noticed these appear to have halogen bulbs in. So, um, so I'm going to go through the advantages and well, the good points and the bad points about this. Good point is, they're bright. And uh, if I just go and turn a couple of lights off, I'll um, show you how good the front one is, at least. So, nice dark room. It gives off a weird beam, if you like, but it also gives off a flood of light, so it's not actually that bad um, to see with, really. It's not the best, but... You can buy these as an individual light, like I did, or as a pair. Um, these cost me two pound each. Um, but for a full set, you could actually spend anywhere from. I just think the average price for a pair is two ninety nine. So one of the advantages is it's um, they're bright. I mean, that's the real one. That's actually just got me straight in the eyes, and that hurt. Um, I've never had one of these lights actually break on me. No switch wires or anything like that. However, in past experience, because I have had a number of these, and when I've got them off various bikes, do not take the lenses off unless you absolutely have to. Because... They are only clipped in with a clip on this side and that side, and they're not very strong. And the clips will break. Um, I would say they would probably break quite easily if I, if I now went like that. I wouldn't put the, I wouldn't put my hopes up that I could uh, salvage it if I dropped it or it fell off the bike. Um, and you can feel it's a cheap, I need to drop that one, a cheap um, plastic. And yeah, you can still buy these. The other disadvantage is the brackets. Um, I've never had this part of the bracket break, where my thumb is. But um, this bit, if you're not careful, you can catch this quite easily if you put the bike in the shed or whatever the shed, the garage, will lean it up and it falls over, you can catch this, and as you can tell it's quite flexible, so if you catch it too hard, they do snap. But, apart from that, the light does lock on pretty well. Um, which means they're a bit of a pain to get off the bracket, but I'd rather they were an absolute pain to get off the bracket than be riding down the road and they fall off when you go over a bump. Because I've had lights do that before, because they haven't been clipped on properly. <laughs> so, I prefer a light that's actually pretty tough to get on, or to get off, I should say, than one that's quite easy. Oh, we'll show you another trick with those as well, if you don't want to use the um, included, included brackets every now and again, or if you do bikes like I do, you will have a bucket load of these 
as you can see. <laughs> and um, just to add to it, that isn't all of them. I just didn't get them all out of the box in the cupboard. But um, one thing that I've noticed you can do is with these ever ready brackets, you can. I have to do it off camera. <laughs> they do lock in there. Well, look. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you could use these brackets if you really, really wanted to. If you, like, didn't want to put them on your fork where they could get damaged. So, yeah, yeah I've got quite a few of these because you know, I've got them off of bikes. I even got them. I got a load of them when I bought a box of bike lights off eBay. Just a box of random bike lights. They were cheap and I was bored at the time. <laughs> it's not a good idea for someone like me to browse eBay when I'm bored and I've got some spare cash. Because if I see something, I will buy it. Anyway. But uh, yeah, a lot of those brackets I also got off of bikes that I've had come in. And I just take them off and I throw them in a box. Now, because I've got so many of them, unless there's any decent uh, nuts and bolts on them, then um, they just go straight in the bin. The back one that was on the race, racer bike in the lounge, I, the bolts were so rusted I couldn't get them off with the with the um, spanner, so I just cut it off with a hacksaw and threw it in the bin. I didn't think it was worth keeping, because I've got so many of them, I don't need it. <laughs> I just took it off and put it in the bin. Same with the front one. Which was actually, the front one was actually the bracket for one of those lights I just showed you. Um, which was actually snapped, so I assume they may have gone over a bump too hard and it jolted the bracket and snapped it. Which is uh, the disadvantage with those brackets, but to be fair, if you're careful with them, they'll be alright, but Uh, if you like older style lights, I'd go for something like those Duracells, for example. Or a set of Everettis, because they are pretty bloody robust. I actually don't think those Duracells look too bad, to be honest. I prefer the Pifco. Because I personally I prefer that sort of sleek look. Probably better for a road bike as well, because it's a bit more aerodynamic. Whereas that is just a brick. You know, the air hit it will be like, it'll be just like a wall. <laughs> but, uh, I haven't got that just for speed, so I've just got that to cruise around on. Right. That's just my way, so... <laughs> yeah. oh. Looking up there, it's just reminded me. Mum got a huge box of uh, CDs from Mr. Biggles, who got them down the recycle centre, so I've been through and uh, nabbed a couple. Well, a couple or twenty. don't actually know how many i got in there, but... <laughs> um... All I really want to do is just uh, put them in the computer and take off what songs I want. Or just rip the whole CDs and make, you know, some folders up for the CDs and whatnot. Uh, and then they can have them back. But uh, neither my mum nor my stepdad are into any dance or trance or anything like that. So I don't really think they'd mind. I might keep a few to put in my little CD collection up there the CD player. <sighs> Should we get a bit of luck? Bollocks. I've lost so many light bulbs, light bulbs because of that. Because I leave them on the floor and I go walking around and I forget 
I actually smell cigarette smoke. I have noticed the cigarettes mum and my stepdad have been smoking. They didn't used to stink, but they do stink now. I think I'd rather have the smell of camel shit burning, to be honest. I actually do not know how many discs I picked up. There was loads and loads more, so I may... When I go over for Christmas, I'll probably take my laptop and an external hard drive and uh, rip some more. I've just got a few bits there. I found one of these in the workshop. It's um, a plate to repair cupboard doors, kitchen cupboard doors, to repair the hinges. Because one of mine was actually broken. It's all ripped away from the cupboard and... Um, there's nothing for the screws to screw into now, and as a result, the door is actually sitting on the um, on the screw if so. That's something I could do tomorrow. It's not urgent. I might even have some here myself somewhere, unless I chuck them all. Anyway, I'm going with this one. Clubber's Guide to 2002 from Ministry of Sound. I've got quite a few like that, Ministry of Sound ones. Um, I've got something from the 80s, The Fine Young Cannibals. I, I had to check that the discs were in them, because I did notice some didn't have discs. Right here, right now, 18 of the finest. What have we got? Ooh. Someone here. I've heard of some of them like Supergrass and the Supernaturals, but oh, and the Lightning Seeds. But there's a few here like um, McAlmott and Butler and uh, Soup Dragons. And, oh, actually, I may have Terrorvision. Yeah, the Animal Men. No, the Autiers. No. Bentley Rhythm Ace, you know, I may stick some of these in the CD player later and see if any of them do work. Some Bobby Williams, because I do like some of his music. Club Life from Kiss. There's a few sort of CDRs in here, but I haven't got a clue if anything is on them. And if there is something on them that probably isn't legal. The best anthems ever. What we got on this one? Two discs. Chumbawamba, Blur, Seahorses, The Chantons, Ocean Colour Sickle. I haven't heard some of these names for a while. Supercross, Cooler Shaker, Reef, Radiohead, Bush, Fun Loving Criminals. I really have not heard these for a while. These, oh my god, these were all around when I was growing up in high school. The Foo Fighters, Prodigy, Ash, Skunk and Nancy, Manic Street Peaches, The Chemical Brothers, Underworld, Left Field, The Verve, what the hell, Garbage, Pulp, whew, there's so many on here I haven't heard in a long while, oh, I do hope the discs work for that, Live Forever, 40 Classic, uh, um, anthems. I'm not going to go through all them. Two discs again, though. Ooh, Oasis. Weren't my um, favourite group. Daft Punk, Discovery. My friend in France likes um, Daft Punk. Euphoria. Trans. Transcendent. Transcendental Euphoria, mixed by Dave Pierce. Several of those sorts of things in there, mixed by various um, DJs. The Ibiza Annual, mixed by Judge Jules and Tall Paul. Again, another one from the Ministry of Sound. And a CDR. What have we got on it? Barcelona. Okay. There's another one, True True Euphoria, mixed by Dave Pierce. I 
don't know if the discs are in there though. It's a DVD, Kinky Boots. Do I dare actually play that one with that title? <laughs> May have to put that through the PC, I think. I've got some loose discs there, I'll do those in a minute. Dave Pierce presents Dance Anth Anthems, Volume 2. I've gone through that one, have I? Did I go through those? No, I didn't. We've got DJ Sonic, Club Mix. Uh, Clever's Guide, Summer 2003, Ministry of Sound. And we've got Spring 2002, The Annual. Two CD, 40 tracks. That was CDR. VM Australia TV ads, DVD format. Right. <laughs> Reloaded 3, massive hits from, and uh, two CDs. Bloodhound Gang, Gang, My Vitriol, Vitriol, PJ Harvey, Elbow, Granddaddy, Ocean Color Scene, that's one, no placebo, I've heard of them. Wheatus, yeah, Fida, yeah, Ash, Limp Biscuit, Stereophonics, yep, Depeche Mode, cool. So many names on there that I haven't heard for a while. Uplifting Trance. What's that? Soul to Soul, Club get, Club Classics. Yeah, get my tongue in, get my tongue into gear. What's this one? Massive Dance 2001. There's so much more dance type CDs in there. Another Ministry of Sound, that's Clubber's Guide to 2001. I already got them because I do like the club mixes for a lot of songs. Another Robbie Williams one. Can't remember what's on it. 80 minutes CDR. I don't know what's on that one because I haven't actually looked. <laughs> club Mix 2000 and Club Mix 2001. And just some bunch of loose discs here which I haven't got a clue on. Data Safe one. Is that a DVD? No, it's a CD. Scratch the shit. Another one, CD1, CD2, Relax, the Ultimate 80s Disc, e. Might Play, Essen Chill, Essen Chill, I suppose is how you'd pronounce that, The Annual, 2001, New Wave Hits, The Annual, 2002, The Annual, 2001, Essential Ibiza Anthems, CDR, Kiss Club Life, ta-da, whatever that is, True Euphoria, TTVCD3176CD1, and another couple of, uh, what's that, Ministry of Sound, the Annual 2002, oh, Disc 1 and Disc 2, I think the case might still be in the box up mums. Mm. Yeah, but like I said, there's such a box full down at Mum's, I may go through them over Christmas and uh, put some to the PC if there's anything that I want. Oh, fucking hell. Ooh, yeah. found a bargain at the um, charity shops. I'm presuming, because I've watched videos from people such as UXW Bill, um, and they talk about um, goodwill shops quite a lot. Um, I can't think of any other Americans I watch on YouTube who's referred to them as the same thing, but... Um, I presume, and I could be wrong, but I'm presuming they raise money for charity. Is that what, you know, is that why they're called a Goodwill? Is that the same as our charity shops? 
So that's uh, where I found these. Um, that's Technic, ride by riders. And that's Bionicle. Now, I'm not really into Bionicle, but it's Lego, and they were 99p each, so I am going to do a quick video for the um, Lego channel with those. So, uh, yeah. Even if you're not one for going in these um, charity shops or Goodwill stores, I'd recommend it, because you'd be surprised at what you do find in there. Not so much electrical items in the UK, because um, they've got to be tested by law. Um, it doesn't guarantee they work the test, it just tests to make sure they are still safe to use. Just to make sure that, um, you know, um, they call it PAT testing, which is portable appliance testing. And um, all you've, um, it, you don't have to be an electrician to do it either. I could... Um, if I had the cash, I could take a course, um, which if you pass, it will um, qualify you to do PAT testing, even though, even if you're not an electrician, because it's not hard. Basically, all it is, for example, those lights, you'd give them a good visual check to make sure there's no damage, no damage to any wiring. No damage to the lamp holder, no damage to the actual fitting, you know. Um, uh, but the rest of the test is requires plugging it in, so you may hook up a temporary cable to plug it in. Um, you plug it into your machine, and it will actually tell you if there's any leak between live earth and neutral, if earth is present. Obviously on a double insulated um, device that won't um, be earthed, but I'm mean, pretty certain that light there isn't earthed because it's um, double insulated. This is all plastic, this whole unit, so that would be classed as double insulated and classed as earth not required, in theory. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's pretty much as simple as that. And um, if the, it has a plug like this. You'd have to make sure it's got a um, uh, you know plug that complies with modern regulations, such as insulated pins. You'd make sure the plug itself isn't damaged. Power cords like this, you'd make sure there's no damage. Um, make sure it's got the right right rated fuse in the plug. But yeah. It was a Jira plug, so that's actually a rubber plug. Ooh, you don't get many rubber ones. They're actually good because that means you can actually drop those on the floor without worrying about breaking epoxy things. Like you can a lot of the normal ones. Well, not so much these days because a lot of leads like this are sealed. I don't know why. I mean, it's still common on a lot of brand new electrical appliances to get a, a um, plug you can take off yourself, but on some, especially on appliances like washing machines, for example, and other sort of high current devices such as the back of the microwave here and fridges, and they seem to have these uh, sealed plugs on, but things like lamps, for example, my lamp up there, they don't. Um, I'm not sure what the reason is behind that, but uh, I'm sure they've got their reasons. Oh shit! Forgot about those. Remind me not to walk across here barefoot in the dark, because I'm likely to stand on those. I've never heard. Anyway, at nearly half an hour, I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to put it straight to the PC, once I've done the um, Lego one, actually. And uh, get it uploaded, because I have nothing on the PC to upload. I did have some there, but I just couldn't be bothered with them again, so... Don't panic, you haven't missed nothing. Honest, you haven't. They were worse than this. 
But uh, yeah, so if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, please, and thank you. And uh, if you want to see more videos, I do aim to provide more videos with more content after Christmas, and perhaps invest in a tripod at least. That would actually help when I'm playing around with bicycles, so I can set you up so you can actually watch what I'm doing. Clearly. Although a better camera would help as well. Um, anyway, subscribe if you want to, and uh, I guess I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye!